I'm so happy to be home. Oh, it's fun to be home. And also, most of my trucks are here, not all of them. Not all of them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, with six of them. We're still missing two. Two are over the road right now. Um, man, some nice looking trucks. And of course the new one is over here on its own. Um, nice shiny trucks. We're back here in the yard. It just makes you feel good when you see I know it's not good to have all the trucks in one place like that that is what gives me the most anxiety when I drive past like a CR England yard or the Swift yard in Salt Lake and they've got like a hundred trucks just sitting there in the parking lot like like you know all those trucks are brand new and all those trucks have like two thousand dollar a month payments so they're just sitting and uh no, I'm just teasing, but it is cool. It is cool to see all the trucks lined up. The first two blue Peter belts we got are here and then the other two uh, are on the road. But these, let's see, that truck and that truck are taking off tonight. And then that truck and that truck are going Monday. So it's good to be home. There aren't very many trees here, like out in the east, but at least I'm home. I get the mountain views, the mountains over there, Ben Loman Peak. So it's good to it's good to be home. Hope you guys are all having a good day. Thanks for joining me on my my trucking vlog. Let's go do something fun. I don't know if you'd consider this fun, but this is what we're gonna be doing. Hauling some more trash today. Oh, yeah. But yeah, man, that's uh, it's been a good week for YouTube, and, and that's pretty awesome to me that you guys have been that responsive to the videos, especially about the, the red Coronado, you know, it, I mean, I can see why. It's a beautiful truck, and it's going to be my personal truck, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to be using it for a lot of videos. We got it in the shop. They're going to look at the oil leak and the... Uh, couple of the things that were going on with the truck. Uh, we're going to fix the cruise control, the engine brake switch, the handle. What else was there? There's a couple other things like the radio, a couple switches. The headlights are super, super dim. So uh, I might swap some, some other headlights. But yeah, we're going to fix that truck up. It's going to be nice and uh, I'm really, really excited. But, but yeah. Yeah, I'm just, just wanting to start off on a thankful note because I've never seen that much response on my channel before. Um, and uh, you guys are awesome. E even the guys calling me dumbasses about the Jake breaks, about the whatever, you know, if, if I'm doing something wrong, obviously tell me because I am new, relatively, five years in to trucking. I am new. So there's a lot of things I know that I'm doing wrong that, that you know, let me know. What, what can I do to do better? But but the engine brake thing, I, I was a little bit surprised how many people were calling me a steering wheel holder and, and uh, you know, a dumbass or whatever. The, whatever you were going to call me, like, I already explained that the, the, the switch didn't work. I don't know what else you want me to tell you. So... But no, that doesn't affect me. I don't take it personally. So, you know, keep keep the comments coming. If you're watching my videos and you got something mean to say, sure, say it, whatever, I don't care. Uh, no, just be, be, be respectful. Be a little bit respectful. Don't don't say something that will make you, yourself, get in hot water. But, um, but anyways, I'm happy you guys are here. And if you're staying on the videos and you want to see what we're up to, uh, yeah, stick around, right? We're, we're, things are going good for us. We got good, consistent work. We're gonna fix that truck up, uh, and it's gonna be a nice truck. And then we're gonna do some real fun things with it. I'm gonna take it all over the place. Uh, it's gonna be my personal truck that I take over the road, and uh, I'm not gonna hire anybody to drive that truck. As I got a couple comments of people asking if they could drive the truck, Ruby, but Ruby's gonna be my truck. 
Nobody else is going to drive Ruby but me, so um, unfortunately. If you are wanting to work for me, I do have about two other trucks that are going to be coming available uh, at some point, so um, you know, if you're in the Utah area, let me know. Yeah, let's get to the landfill. He gave me the thumbs up, so I guess we're good. Bring it to We are dumped, swapped. I got my vest on because the landfill last us last month to start wearing our safety vests and which I understand why they're just trying to be safe so I got my safety vest on I'm dumped I'm going back up on the scale to get weighed we were freaking light we were only 85,000 pounds total gross so uh, yeah pretty light load this truck is capable of hauling much more than that especially with the, with this trailer and this drop axle I think I can be up to 90 98 for Utah Bridge Law, so um, not my heaviest trailer. I got the five axle trailers that can haul more, um, but I don't know. All right, this guy just got off the scale, so let's uh, swap camera. All righty, there he goes, that ace driver right there. Pull up onto this scale. Oh, it's really bumpy the landfill today. Bounce, bounce, bounce. I am so sorry guys, this camera mount I have is not, not really the best. So I think they just put this new scale in here, it used to be yellow. So I think they just got this new scale. The scanners are still the same. Let me get my ticket. It's an automatic ticket printer, so it prints your ticket. And yep, we are just under 23 tons. So, so I have the ticket from the shipper and now the ticket from the landfill or the receiver. So um, Typically this ticket is more accurate because it gets my weight when I come in and my weight when I leave. So, um, yeah. All right, let's get headed. Beep, beep. Click, 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 let's go. Ha ha ho. Yes, that is right. I am in the Freightliner tonight. Freddy the Freightliner. It's been a minute. I'm sorry about all these dust particles. It's a uh, dust in the yard tonight. Or pollen. I don't know what all this crap is on the screen. What are we doing in Freddy the Freightliner? Parker, I thought you had a full-time driver driving this truck. Well, I did. I mean, I do, not that I don't. But uh, he's taking the week off for vacation. And so uh, I'm gonna use his truck and do his load that he typically does with this uh, Freightliner. I got a disconnect from this trailer. This is my um, 2020 Wabash trailer we bought on the auction. Now I'm kind of, don't judge me, I'm so sorry. I, I tried to put the numbers, maybe you could see, 9327. I tried to spray paint the numbers, but it was freaking windy. <laughs> it just made a mess, so I covered it with red because I was so pissed at myself. Oh my gosh. So that's life. Wow. That aired up really fast. 
Okay, let's check these tires. Let's do pre-trip and get going. I gotta drop this trailer because we are going to Salt Lake to pick up a LCV double set, over length permit. And we're gonna talk about over length and overweight in this video today while we're driving. We're, uh, it's, it's 10 o'clock at night. We're doing a rush load up to Idaho to do a trailer meet with uh, some LTL loads up to, to Idaho with this truck. And this truck has the permit, so we're all good. So let's go. Coming out of the yard now, and we are just about to get on I-15 South. Now, uh, as you may see, my console is lit up like a freaking Christmas tree because the ABS sensor is out or something. I don't know, whatever. Oh, look at the pretty lights off in the distance. We're coming around I-15 southbound. I'm looking at the pretty lights, I, you know. Just kidding, I knew I had to get off here. We're turning off on Center Street in North Salt Lake Bountiful to go get our double trailers. With my very lit up dashboard. Ugh. So that's truck 1076. That's uh, one of my other drivers. We got a whole bunch of these loads from these guys tonight. I guess it was a really big rush, so they had a bunch of trucks booked and uh, my load actually canceled. So I'm gonna take his load because he's he's gonna go home. He was already kind of tired. and um, So I got him a better load tomorrow anyways. Nice bright headlights. So we are going to Wamsutter, Wyoming. We're not going to Idaho anymore. So, but instead of pulling a double, now I'm pulling a single. So I can still talk about over length and over weight stuff. I asked, I got another driver over there. So let's go look at what trailer he's hooking up. That one should be a double, I believe. So this is a 48, 40, or no, 48, 28 double set. This is Caden, he's hooking it up. So this is a double set that you do need per- This is a double set that you do need permits for. Hey, flip those flammable triangles, they forgot to swap them back. Oh, the, the, these placards. Sometimes they forget to swap them. This is oh, not a... Yeah. That's another video I'll talk about later. You know, hazmat versus non-hazmat, but this is not a hazmat and they just forgot to swap them. So, so this, depending on what state you're in, this is a over length permitted load, 48 foot, 28 foot, plus your gap there from the dolly, so. Um, we have permits for Idaho, Utah, Montana, Nevada. Wyoming, actually, surprisingly enough, you don't need a permit with this length of a combination set. So that's what we're going to talk about. But Caden's hooked up. He's going up to Idaho. And I'm going to go get my single trailer. There's my truck. And then we're going to go to Wamsutter, Wyoming. That's where we're going to Wamsutter. So, trailer number 7080. Believe it or not, guys, we are pulling an empty trailer. So, not sure how that's working out. All right, the gate is open. We can go. Got my trailer hooked up back there. We have a 48 foot single trailer that is, I can't believe I'm saying this, empty. An empty 48 trailer going to Denver, which is mind boggling to me because Typically, it pays better to go to Denver than to come from Denver, you know? Denver's typically what I would expect to have the empty trailers coming from, but nope, that's how we roll, baby. So I'm gonna be getting 12 miles to the gallon going to Denver. Heck yeah, bro. All right, I am here in Wham Sutter, Wyoming. I'm behind the new uh, 1-9 truck stop. 
that they got. I'm a little bit tired, but, uh, but I'm feeling all right other than that. Uh, that was until I checked on my YouTube and uh, somebody left a comment that, uh, you know, again, still doesn't affect me personally. I really don't care what anybody says about me uh, on YouTube, but I thought it was kind of funny, so I'm gonna make his first line of his comment the name of this video. This guy is 100% a rookie driver. And uh, in this very long comment, he said, driver, you're gonna get shut down. You're a rookie because you just bought that log book. You don't have seven days to prove where you've been. <laughs> Did you even see the title of the video, dude? Like, the title of the video is first load a new truck. And the video before that is picking up the new truck. Okay, who do, who do you think I am? I'm just some driver that somebody sent to pick that truck up. I bought that truck. I have the invoice to prove it. I have the, the pay stub or not the, 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 the check stub for paying for the truck from the auctioneer. And I have the, the receipt from the, the shop that did all the work on the Freightliner, the, the, the brakes, the tires, the shocks, the oil pan gasket. I have all that to prove where I was. And you're saying I'm a rookie because I just bought a frickin' logbook? Dude, ooh, ooh. I bought that truck specifically so I don't have to do e-logs. I know what I'm doing. I have a temporary registration for the truck. I have all the paperwork in line. It's already added to my IFTA account. I don't know what you want me to... Yeah. There's this beautiful thing called a temporary registration. And you see, when you buy one of those, and when you also have an invoice or a bill of sale, which is what Utah calls them and most other states recognize, a bill of sale as a formal contract for buying a new truck. Anyways, I've got all that to prove to DOT that I just bought the truck. Like, I don't need to prove where the truck's been the last seven days. And DOT specifically says you have seven days that you can run on paper logs if your ELD is malfunctioning or you bought a new truck, okay? I'm not gonna get put out of service for that, okay? Uh, anyways, and the, the Jake Brakes, I've already talked about that, so uh, we'll move on from that. But that is the title of this video. I am 100% a rookie, so. That's where we're going today. Okay, I'm done complaining about all the comments. Uh, to be to be honest, I'm actually really flattered that you people are commenting things like that. So it doesn't really bother me too bad. Um, but 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 still, I I, I kind of had to address that one. Like like I, I obviously I know what e logs are, dude. I know what hours of service are. I bought that truck specifically so that I could be on paper logs because it is ELD exempt and I have all the paperwork to prove that I just bought the truck. I've not been driving it for more than a week. Okay, so. Let's talk about over length loads. Even though I kind of got messed up because I was hoping to be on an over length load today. Um, let's talk about oversized, over dimensional, over length. Now, if you're gonna haul over length or overweight, there's a couple questions you need to know before that. The biggest question is, is it divisible or non-divisible? Now let me explain what divisible means. If you don't know what divisible means, think of it as dividing. If it is a non-divisible load, that means you can't separate the load and make it lighter or smaller. So think about equipment, big, heavy, single unit, things, machinery, equipment, manufacturing equipment, or like construction equipment, uh, you know, like stuff you see on low boys or, or specialized trailers, typically for hauling heavy generators, uh, stuff like that, that can't be easily taken apart to make it fit dimensions, dimensions or weight. Um, you know, that depends on, I guess it varies from who you ask from state to state and even from DOT officer to DOT officer. I've heard some DOT officers say, say four hours, if it takes longer than four hours to take the machine apart, it is non-divisible. I've had other people tell me eight or two. Uh, it's really a gray area and, and you could probably skirt that line pretty well if you're doing oversized non-divisible loads. 
Uh, now the reason there's that specification is because your permits will be different from state to state and every state looks at uh, non-divisible and divisible loads differently. So all of my trucks are basically divisible loads for the most part. I, I've hauled a couple non-divisible loads before like that that uh, that load I picked up, that crusher grinder in the Coronado. That is a non-divisible load. I can't take that load apart. It is overweight as a single unit. You know, I can't take it apart easily. And uh, so I would have gotten a permit as a non-divisible permit. Now, most states, there's not really a limit, I guess, on weight or size because, you know, if you're hauling a 200,000 pound generator, you really can't take that apart. Whether you're in California or Nebraska or Montana or wherever, it's the same generator. So, um, so they kind of have to let you get the permit. You know, the cost is going to vary now, depending on the length, the size, the whatever, the weight. Now, the difference comes from state to state that you really need to worry about. I mean, you still have to buy the permits for every state if you're doing non-divisible loads. Um, but when it comes to divisible loads, there's a lot more variation, I think, in like what is and what isn't legal because a divisible load is something you can take, you know, you can take it apart, make it lighter, make it more to spec scale or dimensions. So for instance, the load that I was going to haul tonight, which now is just a single trailer, an empty single trailer by that. <laughs> Oh man, isn't that great? Uh, if I was overweight pulling one of these Rocky Mountain Turnpike double sets, they just take a pallet off. That's all they got to do. Take a pallet off or take enough pallets off until I'm legal weight. So uh, you have to check, you have to be very specific and check every state that you're planning on hauling on. What are the rules? Now, I'm not too familiar with the Midwest. I know the Midwest has a lot of states that allow you to be super, super heavy overweight, but not a lot of them let you do over length. So, like combination vehicles over uh, 60 or 70 feet. Um, so, things like that, I'm not super knowledgeable. I know Michigan and Indiana, you can have like super, super heavy singles, like five, seven, sometimes even eight axle single trailers. Um, but I, I, I don't know those permits just because I don't run over there. I am very familiar with Utah, Idaho, Montana, Washington, Oregon, uh, Nevada, uh, Colorado, uh, Arizona a little bit. I, I believe you can do the doubles. California is a no-go. California is not... They do not do any oversize for divisible loads. They do not do any overweight for divisible loads. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the funniest thing to me when I drive through California and I see like two axle dump trucks. Like, you, that's like one scoop from the loader. And here in Utah, I have my eight axle dump truck and I can haul a lot more than that. So anyways. Uh, so Utah, all of my trucks have Utah divisible permits just to have even though my sleeper trucks don't haul heavy very often or really at all uh, we do do a lot of these over length double sets um, so Utah for the most part they're pretty relaxed on their overweight permits and their over length permits now I always go to the max so the max is uh, and Utah measures it by the trailer length not by the overall length, whereas Idaho does like the overall length, not the trailer length. So we have 90 foot, 95 feet of total combination vehicle uh, trailer length. So you can do 4840s, 4545s, 4828s. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different lengths that I can be. And then max gross weight, I can be 129,000. Now the permit. They're gonna ask you when you try and buy these permits, they're gonna ask you a ton of questions. What, you know, how heavy are you regularly? How, what's your max length? And based on those dimensions and weights, they will charge you accordingly. The most expensive is $500, I believe. Uh, now, Idaho is different. They only give you the max. And uh, 
and they measure the full trailer length and it's only $45. So it, it varies from state to state. Um, you really just gotta call them. Now, Wyoming, on the other hand, for the trailer length that I was gonna take, the 48, 28, they measure trailer length, but you can be 70 feet before you need an over length for it. So you actually don't even need it if you're going into Wyoming under 80,000 pounds. So um, just something to think about. I mean, a lot of these states, these permits aren't actually that expensive. And uh, as long as you have your endorsements, you could get some pretty good paying loads if you're hauling doubles or if you're hauling overweight. You just have to know the rules and you just gotta call the port of entries. Uh, I know everyone likes to demonize DOT, but if you talk to them before they catch you in a violation, they are more than happy to explain the rules and the laws to you and look them up and help you. They wanna make sure you're legal. And it, I mean, it helps that you're buying permits from them, you're paying for it, but, uh, but they will help you know exactly what you need. And uh, so that's my quick explanation of over length and stuff. Uh, We'll catch you guys in the next video. Uh, take care.